the problems of africa have multiplied and day in day out we hear so many issues confronting social aspects political aspects and economic aspects of our lives now one of the central problems has been the issue of military interventions now what is this all about military intervention has become one of the problems distracting the development or economic growth of a lot of west african countries when you look at what is going on we've experienced some in mali we've had one in Guinea, we've had the one in Burkina Faso, and indeed, we need to go back into history and see how these things started. Ghana is one of the places that we can look at when it comes to the issue of military interventions. Thank God we are having a smooth democracy and we need to maintain that. I'll take you back into history and we'll talk about the coups that occurred. So when we say military intervention, we are actually looking at a situation where the military takes power from a civilian government that is using a constitutional rule. The military uses decrees. When they come into power, they try to abandon the constitution. They use their decrees or orders. They try to stop political parties from operating and they would want to entrench themselves into power. With the mindset of trying to restore certain things or rots that have been caused in the society, they come with a mind to solve problems and so many things. That is what they claim. We'll look at our history and see what actually happened in the past from the first coup we experienced in 1966 when the cpp or Nkrumah's government was overthrown or toppled i'll take you to those years and events and we'll look at what actually happened who did what and then the parties and the activities generally all the parties or the groups the military groups that come into power would want to back their activity, the, the reason for their coup or the uh, cutting of the legitimate rule or the constitutional rule or power takeover. They would want to back them with so many issues or reasons why they actually went ahead to do the coup. Some have come out with reasons like economic mismanagement on the part of the civilian. Some military groups have criticized political parties of the civilians trying to entrain themselves into office using one party state, just like in Nkume's case, as the criticisms were raised against him. Then we can also look at the fact that some military groups criticize corrupt practices by civilians. They also talk about the fact that there is a lot of external influence or external forces to interfere in our issues, and they are not pleased with that. Some also complain about abuse of power on the part of the civilian. So they will want to stage a coup in order to take them out of power. Some will also um, raise concerns of interference in the work of the judiciary. And we know for a fact that some of the military groups themselves have political ambitions. So they try to use the power they have, any means, and then use the gun to come into power. Now, from what we've seen in Ghana's history, we can say or conclude that we have experienced five successful coup d'etat. So look at Nkrumah's overthrow, who came after Nkrumah. We'll talk about the FIFA, General FIFA, Ankara, K. Buzia, Echampong, General Kufo, Rollins, Leman, Rollins again with the PNBC, then uh, now becoming NBC, and this is where we are today. All right, so follow me closely, and let's get into these events. So as you already know, everybody remembers that the Conventions People's Party, led by Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, helped the country gain independence in 1957. So the CPP was there, and then from that 1957, we're still having the Queen as our head of state, Nkrumah was the Prime Minister. So let's say that was just after gaining independence. Now let's come to when we became a Republican state. So the beginning of the first republic, since we are talking about military regimes and then the overthrow of Nkrumah. So CPP took power and then from there, they led us to that point when we became a Republican state. Then what happened from that stage, 1960, then on the 24th of February, so we have CPP, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, so Nkrumah CPP, Convention People's Party, and then they were overthrown. So this was a civilian government. So wherever I put the C means civilian, or you can have uh, Nkrumah was a civilian, not a military ruler. So the civilian government 
they rule with a constitution. They call that constitutional rule. But the military, they rule with decrees. So they came by the power of the gun or the barrel. And then they seized power from a legitimate government or from a civilian government. So General Efifa and Ankara came with the NLC, the National Liberation Council. So you see, heavy, powerful name, National Liberation Council. So a free fire, then Ankara, where the military. So military coming in to overthrow Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. That was the date, first coup d'etat, 24th February 1966. If we want to look at it from that uh, point where we gained or became a Republican, say 1st July 1960, Nkuma ruled for six years after, and then he was overthrown. So he wasn't actually in the country. So we're told that he went on a, a peacekeeping mission. Uh, it was a summit, a meeting in Hanoi, and then that was where he heard the news that he has been overthrown and the seat had been captured here in Ghana. So, because at that point, we don't use the name Gold Coast any longer. Gold Coast changed to Ghana after we gained independence. So that is it. So these people, National Liberation Council, did their work and then they um, toppled Nkrumah's government. So this is a military government. So First Republic ended after these people did a coup. So then there was something that people claim it was an agenda between uh, the military group here NLC and then the Progress Party. The Progress Party was led by K. Busia. So Dr. Kofi Abrefa Busia, Busia led that party, Progress Party. So they came after. So people claimed that there was some form of arrangement between this Progress Party and this particular uh, group, the military group. So they handed over power to a civilian. So K.A. Buzia, so Buzia came and then formed his government. So this civilian, this is the beginning of the Second Republic because it's a civilian and they use the constitution to rule. So hence the beginning of what? The 1969 um, constitution. Okay. All right. So now K.A. Buzia came. They formed a government that had two heads, by Cephalos executive. So that was headed by Edward Okufuado, and then went on with K. Buzia to rule with the constitution, the 1969 constitution. So this is the first time in the Republic that we had a prime minister, that was a K. Buzia, and then we had a head of state. So K. Buzia, head of government, that's a progress party government, and then Edward Okufuado, the head of state. So they ruled and what happened? There was another coup. So this coup was staged by the National Redemption Council, NRC. That was Ignatius Kutu Echampo. So I.K. Echampo also did this work over there and then took over. So this was a military. So we have the Progress Party uh, taking that power on the 1st of October 1969 but it ended on the 13th of January, 1972. So that was that. So the beginning of a champion's government, 13th January, 1972. So the moment they take power from you or they seize power from you, it means that that will become the beginning of that military government. You know, here we are focusing on the military government, but we can't talk about the military government and leave out the civilian government because they came in between them. All right. So I.K. Champon, military, and then um, ruled uh, from that 13th January 1972 to the 5th of July 1978, because there was a coup. The coup was staged by his own close, uh, should I say, deputy or assistant or uh, somebody who was very close to him. So that was General F.W.K. Ekufo, F.W.K. Ekufo. So William Ekufo. So he took over from this man. He overthrew his own boss and then took the seat from him. 
So he was still a military person. So that was the third coup. So the NRC actually was the name of a champion's party, okay? But it was also called the Supreme Military Council. So the Supreme Military Council, there was Supreme Military Council 1, and because the um, Ekufo himself was part of this Supreme Military Council, he now formed the second or the part two of the Supreme Military Council. So IK Champions own would be Supreme Military Council 1, and then SMC 2 will be Ekufo himself. So General Ekufo came with Supreme Military Council 2. Yes, yeah, so that was on the 5th of July. 1978 and he also ruled to the 4th of june 1979 june 4th the very popular june 4th or famous june 4th that you've heard who did this coup that was flight lieutenant jerry john rollins so he came with the armed forces revolutionary council afrc armed forces revolutionary council when the general Kufo took over, he saw a very active um, young guy in the military um, named Rollins. So he knew that Rollins could be a threat. You know, that is what he did to his master. So definitely he could smell that somebody can also stage a coup and overthrow him. So he actually arrested Rollins, put him in jail. But Rollins and his people um, broke jail. Some friends, close friends of Rollins helped him, broke jail, and then came back to take power from the power from general ekufo so that was the june 4th so A afrc that was rollins yes so 1979 1979 so this was a military rule but we can i'll tell you why this wasn't a military even though the coup was staged by a military person rollins did something interesting here so in that 1979 he decided to hand over power so the coup was staged in june in that same year in september rollins then met a civilian took him from the north dr hilary man and it was one of the things that one of the remarkable things that he did and won the heart of a lot of nerdness. So he gave Liman the opportunity to be the president as a civilian because he felt that, okay, there is a lot of work he needs to do, clean the rot in the society. And then what he called, he named the house cleaning and told Liman to be there and use legitimate power, use the courts, all the means, the legal instruments to make sure that the house cleaning continues. That means that if anybody, any corrupt personnel is found in that particular government at that time, the person can be prosecuted through legal means, okay, or in the right way. So he was expecting Liman to do that. And then told Liman that he should hold that seat. He will come back and take the seat from him if he doesn't do the house cleaning that he has told him to do. So that was what actually happened between us. So, the 1979 was actually a civilian. At uh, the beginning, was a civilian regime. So he gave it to Lima. Lima took over from that point. And then what happened? That 24th September, uh, there was an election, of course. So there were some independent candidates. So Lima's party was there. Um, so I'm making it this way. Was a, the People's National Party. So People's National Party. So Lima came with that party and then ruled as a civilian but he did not last indeed what rollins said rollins came back and took the seat from him so that was like another coup that he did after he ousted or uh, um, toppled general ekufo so he took the seat back from liman that's a pmp over three and that was the 31st december that 31st december 1981 1981 so that's just a, f a few years after the um he gave the seat to liman so he took his thing back 
Yes. So you hear about the famous story that people have told about the Jatun Timinyefe, because people actually within the government and then close who were close to Liman actually advised him, told him or warned him to use his powers to in a way capture Rollins and then because definitely Rollins will come back and take the seat from him. But he said Rollins can't do anything. Well, there was some level of trust over there. So that was what went on. Then um shockingly or surprisingly, Rollins came back and indeed took the seat from uh, Dr. Hila Liman. So this was a military regime. So we can call the second coming of Rollins a military regime. So from that 1981, Rollins ruled from that point and then we got to a point where he changed. So when he came back, when he came back, he toppled um, General Kufo with the AFRC. Gave this, okay, gave the seat to Liman, came back with the PNDC, not the AF. So the second coming of Rollins was the PNDC, Provisional National Defense Council. So he now took the seat back from Liman with the Provisional National Defense Council on that 31st December 1981. Yeah, so that was what happened. Then gradually, as we're approaching that 1990, 91, 92, um, there were complaints that uh, people, Ghanaians, were tired of the military rule and they wanted to go back to civilian rule where we needed a constitutional rule. A whole lot of issues came up. There were criticisms um, of the army, the way the military took advantage of the situation and then took people's rights. There were a lot of reported rape cases, killings, and so on, abuse, and all forms of um, disheartening, unpleasant activities. All right, so we'll put it that way. So what happened was that the uh, changing back to the republic. So you can see, after this first republic, military rule, then a civilian rule, second republic, a champion came, military rule. Um, General Kufo took over from a champion, military rule. Then we have the AFRC 1979 uh, with a Liman ruling. That was the third republic. And now we go to the fourth republic, 1992, where the 1992 constitution was drawn, was accepted. And then that's what we've been using to date. And we've had the president that have come, Rollins being the first president of the fourth republic, then followed by President Kufo. And then Mills also came. Ekufuado came, then John Mahama, and then Ekufuado again. So we've had that. So these were the military regimes that we had. So if you want to look at it or count, we can say that Ghana had gone through five successful coup d'etat or military regimes. So the first coup was the 66 coup, the National Liberation Council, toppling the um, CPP, that's in Kumeh's government. And then, that was the first one. The National Redemption Council, Kutu Echampon's coup. Then, he took over the, the seat, or took the seat from K. Buzia and the Progress Party. Then, what happened? The Supreme Military Council, too, that's his own member, Ekufo, now took the seat from him again. That was within his own government. And that was the third one. The fourth one was the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council taking the power from Ekufo himself. Okay, that's General Ekufo. Then that's with the AFRC. Then Rollins giving it uh, to Liman as a civilian. And then coming back to take it, that was the fifth one, coming back to take it from Liman with the PNDC. I'm sure you've gotten the um how the whole thing went and uh, you be, you've been able to pick something from here yeah all right so we can clearly see that a lot of these military groups have their own reasons why they stage the coups that we experienced in our history from that 1966 to the 1981 when you look at what uh, a free fire and ankara group said the uh, Nkrumah was doing in power they criticized him as a dictator trying to entrench himself using the pda 
uh, Preventive Detention Act of 1958, passing that law to stop other political parties from operating, trying to get uh, or stifle opposition. And all these things were leveled against him. They staged their coup. When you look at a champion also coming into power, staged a coup against the Progress Party's government, that's Bruzian to trying to level uh, criticism such as or raising concerns such as corruption in the government and then the issue about the student loan where students were asked to pay some amount of money and the government only covered tuition and all these things. These were some of the reasons that a champion also gave. Okay. And then looking at the economic mismanagement also. Then the people also, he himself, there, there were allegations, there were criticisms leveled against him, his government, what he did, forming the union government, for instance, where the police, the military, and some groups were made to, to form a nonpartisan government. And people felt that that was to make him uh, be in power for, for long and that he wasn't democratic and she could be a dictator and a whole lot of things. That is what people also said. The one who also came after him was criticized. So they may have genuine reasons, okay? Even AFRC, Rawlings' AFRC, and then the PNDC, then the citizens complained, they were tired of military rule and the abuses that occurred, a whole lot. These reasons could be genuine reasons, okay? Or concerns or grievances from the people or maybe um, the military, the police or institutions, government institutions. But I think there should be a way we go about it so that innocent souls are not uh, destroyed. Okay, Military regimes have caused us a lot. When we look at coup d'etat, things that have happened, let's look at those countries. You see that, of course, citizens may demand for certain things at a point. I think African leaders should, should have a proper way of resolving such issues. People that have power, people that have authority, people who are in authority should have a way of resolving these issues that it will not cause any of such uprising or incite people to engage in some of these acts to topple a government or stage a coup in the country. I think this lesson, in a way, history is there to remind us so we don't make the mistakes we made in the past and you have learned something or picked something in addition to what you already know about military rule in Ghana and what is happening in West Africa and other parts of Africa or even in the world. Thank you for watching GCL Tutorials. I will come your way again. If you have questions and comments, put them in the comment section or boss. Whatever you want me to respond to, I'll do that. Be safe out there and bye for now.